As you may know, the World Wide Web celebrated its 30th birthday last year, with the paper written by Tim Berners-Lee called Information Management, a proposal, first being published in March of 1989. And this anniversary was covered all over the media last spring, but it was actually 30 years ago this year that the world's first web server went live on Christmas Day in 1990. Yeah, those guys were very committed to their job. By then, Tim had written the world's first web browser and server software, and the world's first web page went live, which you can actually still visit today. I'll include a link in the video description if you want to check it out. And the specs for that first server were very modest by today's standards, but it was a very powerful system for the time. A next workstation, which Tim had on his desk and had a big handwritten sticker on the front proclaiming, this machine is a server, do not power down, as it was literally possible to turn off the entire World Wide Web by shutting down that one machine. Now, the machine this first web server ran on was actually a Next computer system, released in 1988 featuring a Motorola 68030 CPU running at 25 megahertz. It came with 8 megabytes of RAM, expandable to 16, and 256 megabytes of storage. Now, if you read lots of articles about it, you may see the claim that this was a Next Cube that he ran the web on which did look identical, but that was actually launched in September of 1990 and was spec'd a bit higher with an 040 CPU. But given how close that was to the server launching and claims that the purchase approval for the machine was made back in 1989, I'd go with the fact that it was actually the older Next system, although if anyone's got any concrete proof, please do let me know. Now, of course, hosting your own web server today is as simple as using one of the many web hosting services for websites or something like AWS if your needs are a little bit more demanding. But not many small to middle-sized companies go to the effort of actually hosting their own servers on hardware in their offices anymore. So that's a history lesson over, but given the fact that that early web server had such lowly specs by today's standards, I figured it should be more than possible to turn this machine, made in 1992, running an Intel 486DX2 at 66 megahertz with 60 megabytes of RAM running MS-DOS into a server for a simple website. This video was inspired by Brian Lunduk's recent article and a video that he made where he managed to get a web server running in VirtualBox using the modern open source DOS replacement FreeDOS, which did look remarkably simple. But that got me thinking, and you'll know that obviously I'm a real hardware kind of guy, and I figured it should be possible to host a web server using similar software on this old machine. And I've actually done an entire video on this particular PC before, but to quickly recap the specs, a 486DX2 CPU, 60 megabytes of RAM, I've also got a SCSI 6-speed CD-ROM drive in here as well, we've got a floppy drive, a 500 megabyte internal IDE hard disk, Sound Blaster 16, a very generic SVGA graphics card, and an ISA Ethernet card in here as well. Software-wise, it runs MS-DOS 6.22 and Windows 3.11 for workgroups. And as you can see, the machine is online. I can surf old websites just fine on it, so it should be good to go. And to do this, we're going to use a piece of software from 2006 called WebServe, as it was logically named. Now, this was written by Mark Chambers, who actually made quite a few nice internet applications for MS-DOS that you can still download from his website, including IRC clients and servers, email programs, and WebServe. And WebServe is actually written in QuickBasic. And on his website, he does promise that a new version will be released in 2008, but unfortunately, the download link is still version 0.09 beta release, so it doesn't look like the full version 1.0 ever materialized. And even though this machine will only allow one incoming connection at a time, it will be fine for this experiment we're going to do today. Now, networking from MS-DOS requires slightly more steps than doing it from Windows. First of all, you'll need a packet driver for your network card, which fortunately the included software with mine had a packet driver on there. And configuring it takes a little bit of manual setup, but it's not too complicated. You just need to get information like the IRQ interrupt and the IO base address, all that DOS loveliness that we don't have to deal with in 2020. And after entering this information, the packet driver is loaded into RAM. Then I unarchive the WebServe software onto my C drive, and this comes with the executable, a setup file, 
some example HTML documents and the TCP IP software. Now next we'll need to run this and it does need again a bit of configuring. So first we put in our desired IP address. I use Google Wi-Fi as my router, so I've got a spare address at 192.168.86.66. Put in your gateway address, which will normally just be your router. And the net mask, which in this case is 255.255.255.0. And with that, it looks like we're up and running. So now we can launch web server and test it out. And as you can see, it's initialized. So now we can move over to my Windows 10 machine on the same network and type in the network address for the 486 and there it is. The default HTML file included with web serve showing on Chrome on my modern PC. And just for a giggle, I can also do this on my iPhone as well. In fact, any machine on my local network. And as you can see, WebServe shows you a log of which files have been served to which addresses. And if you wanted to see something a little bit more interesting than the default HTML page that comes with WebServe, I've actually put a template of an old website that I made around 20 years ago onto a floppy disk and copied it onto my C drive. Now, by changing the HTM docs location, you can actually view this web page from WebServe on my modern PC. Now, as you can see, there are a few errors in the formatting, but there you go, an actual website being served up. And to be fair, the speed is pretty good. And just in case you wondered, there are actually web browsers that you can run from within MS-DOS. So if you've got a machine like this, and maybe you don't want to go to the extra added effort of installing Windows or using up hard disk space with Linux, you can actually test out the local HTML pages or even surf the web from the DOS environment itself. Now, the most logical one would be using something like Lynx, which is a text-only browser that's available on pretty much every platform. Originally, development started back in 1992, and the most recent release came out in August of last year, making Lynx the oldest web browser that's still in general use and in active development. And as you can see, it actually works really well on a machine like this, as it strips out all of the images and the style formatting and gives you just pure text, which of course isn't too demanding and works nice and efficiently. And you can click links and navigate throughout websites. And actually for reading text-only pages and documents, it's quite a nice way of doing it. And if you wanted to go really fancy, you've got Dillo. Now, Dillo is a minimalistic web browser, particularly intended for older or slower computers. Now, of course, you're not going to be able to watch YouTube using Dillo, but it's probably the most fully featured web experience that you'll get on MS-DOS. So there you have it. Now, obviously, I wouldn't recommend hosting your website on the 486 PC today for not only speed, but also security reasons. A lot of the software that I've showed you here is, at the very least, a decade or two old and probably wouldn't survive all that well being let wild onto the web with all the multiple malicious attacks that are out there. But maybe you did want to run like a local intranet or something. One of these machines could do the job, but that said, for the sake of power usage and more up-to-date software, if you want to do something like this outside of just doing it for fun, you probably want to use something like a Raspberry Pi or a low-powered modern PC to do it. But there is a proof it can be done. You can run a web server on a 486 PC in 2020. And if you've enjoyed this video, do you know that I actually do a weekly retro gaming and technology podcast? It's been going for over four years now. And every week on the show, we are joined by a veteran of the video games or computer industry. And this week on the Retro Hour podcast, we get the history of the legendary BBC Micro. Now, anyone that grew up in Britain in the 80s and 90s will have used either BBC Micros or the Acorn Archimedes. We chat to the father of the BBC Micro and the man who was the co-designer of the chip that changed the world, starting at Acorn and now lives in pretty much every smartphone in the world the ARM processor. Steve Ferber joins us on the podcast this week and you can get it from Spotify, Apple or Google Podcasts or just search for the Retro Hour in your favourite podcast client of choice or download it from our website direct at theretrohour.com. And while you're here on YouTube, you might want to check out a few more of my videos and maybe consider supporting my channel on Patreon if you'd like to see more videos like this. Thank you for watching. 
I'll see you next week.